six, five, four. Hey, good evening. And welcome to the May 21st Northampton City Council meeting. My name is Julie Shara. I'm the council president and I will be presiding this evening. The meeting and all who participate in it with us on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. It is recording right now. Um, if you wish to participate in public comment, please go to the city's website, northamptonma.gov, and access the login information from the posted agenda for this meeting, which is also on the calendar. Uh, public comment we're going to start with, as we always do. And um, we, uh, if you know that you wish to make public comment, um, if you could please use the raise hand feature to indicate that. So if you go down to the bottom toolbar on, on Zoom um, and either hover over it, or maybe it's just static there and click on participants, that will open up a participant window. And down at the bottom of that, you should have a, um, a button to raise your hand. So if you do that, I will be able to see that your hand is raised and I'll be able to call on you. Um, if you are on the phone, you can also raise your hand actually on the phone if you hit star nine. But uh, I see that there are two people that have called in. So um, if I don't see a raised hand, I will check in with you and ask if you'd like to, um, to participate in public comment. Um, so I will unmute each raised hand or those two phone numbers and I'll ask. Um, and you may comment with or without video, it's up to you. When you begin, please state your name and your city or town for the public record. To ensure that everyone has equal opportunity to speak, we ask that you limit your comment to three minutes. After three minutes, I will ask you to please finish your sentence. According to the council rules, we do not respond during public comment as it's your time to speak to us. So while your comments should be directed to us, you'll understand when we don't respond. You may speak on any topic. It doesn't need to be an item that's on the agenda, but as this is an open meeting where anyone can come on, I'll do my best to act quickly if anyone is acting in a way um, that's clearly inappropriate and outside of what we would expect in council chambers. And I will remove anyone from the meeting that I feel needs to be removed. If you don't wish to make a comment, we ask that you watch on channel 15 or by streaming on Northampton Open Media. The recording of this meeting will be available on Northampton Open Media um, on their government video archive channel on YouTube. And we thank them as always for being wonderful partners for us and for providing this public access that they always have. Um, I also wanna remind people that we're always happy to receive comments by email. They are just as much a part of the public record as you coming on to Zoom and talking to us that way. So please email us at citycouncil at northamptonma.gov. Uh, so we're ready to start public comment. Once public comments concluded, we'll convene the meeting and anyone from the public who remains on Zoom will no longer be recognized for participation or unmuted during the meeting. And if, they're, if they have video, their video will be turned off. So I see one raised hand. This is for the phone number that ends in 081. Um, so I'm gonna unmute you. And hi, would you like to provide public comment for us? Yes, this is Hildegard Friedman. I live at 35 Fruit Street, apartment G68 Cahill, public housing. I would like to suggest that the health department delineate statistics in regard to cases and deaths of COVID-19, both to the newspaper, the um, Daily Hampshire Gazette and your website, and specify, specific, specifically describe which wards, we are talking about cases and deaths, which buildings of housing, am I, am I, am I finished? No, you're, you're finished. Okay, I'll continue. Which buildings, I heard a ring ring, of housing and a socioeconomic breakdown, including recently unemployed as well as business and professionals. Uh, I believe this is more relevant now because of the current testing that is being done. Uh, thank you. This is again Hildegard Friedman G68 Cahill. Thank you so much, Ms. Friedman, for that comment. Um, the other phone number I see, um, 
ends in 696. Would you like to make a public comment this evening? 413, phone number ending in 696. I've, I've taken the rest of your phone number out so it wasn't displayed on the video. Okay, if you would like to comment, um, one six nine six. Yes, that seems right. Is that your phone number? Would you like to make a public comment? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I would just like to express that Cahill Apartments uh, have a lot of problems here going on now with people thinking that they own the buildings here. They can threaten people here. And there is a lot of drama and drugs going on in here. And when you speak to the police department or Northampton Housing Authority, they sweep it all under the rug. They don't have any concerns about what we live here in. And I don't, I don't like it. And you know, I, I don't know what can be done about it, but uh, we really have a serious problem here going on at, on at Cahill Apartments. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. I appreciate that comment. Could you please? Uh, we need to have your name and um, your city or town, which you've said you live at Cahill, but. Um, for the public record, please. David Call. Thank you so 35, much. 35K Hill. Thank you very much for those comments. Okay. I'm looking for other hands of anyone else who would like to comment. Um, I see at least one other. Let me just. Mr. Hamill, would you like to comment? Oh, I guess, can you hear me? I can. Oh, great, okay. Well, thanks for first time doing a Zoom meeting with the city council. Um, oh. My understanding is that you may be discussing tonight um, a first vote for a municipal light plant as a potential vehicle for uh, creating a municipal broadband network for the city. I just like to, uh, express my support for that and hope that uh, the city council will support it as well. Um, this is something that has to be, if it, but the, uh, I'm on the uh, Northampton High Speed Community Network Coalition and we are concerned about the timing of this because if it is to be done, it really should be done, it will, it will need to be done in two votes, one this fiscal year uh, and one the next fiscal year. So there's not obviously not too much more time in this fiscal year. Um, and potentially this might be something that to go before the voters um, in November, perhaps. So um, our, our coalition is concerned about this and we hope that you will consider it and uh, discuss it tonight. That's pretty much it. Thank you for those comments. Okay, anybody else who would like to provide public comment? I think everybody else is the rest of us. So going once, twice, oops, hold on one moment. Hold on one sec. Uh, Amy, would you like to provide public comment? No. Amy, I don't mean to no, put you on the spot. No, nope, I'm all set, thanks. Okay. Okay, um, so hearing no other public comment, we will convene. So Laura, will you take the roll, roll please? Sure. Councillor Dwight. Councillor Dwight. You're muted. I'm here. Great. Councillor Foster. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Labarge. Present. Councillor Maori. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor Quinlan. Here. Councillor Shara. Here. 
and Councillor Thorpe. Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, we have convened. Um, the first thing on our agenda is uh, we have two announcements of public hearings and then we have a public hearing. So I'm gonna read the announcements first. Um, announcement of public hearing on the city council budget. Uh, we're having our budget hearings on June 3rd and June 4th, 2020. On June 3rd, that will be at 5 p.m. on Zoom. Um, and on the 4th, it'll be at 7 p.m. So by the order of the city council in accordance with section 7-4 of the Charter of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, the city council will hold a public hearing to consider the proposed FY 2021 budget commencing on Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020 at 5 p.m. by remote participation and continuing on Thursday, June 4th, 2020 at 7 p.m. by remote participation. Instructions for access accessing the meetings will be posted on the agendas. The city council will hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. The budget is available for inspection by the public on the city of Northampton website at www.northamptonma.gov. Uh, our second announcement is a public hearing on 20.0 uh, National Grid Verizon New England poll petition for Park Hill Road. That's petition number 257-63215. Um, these are two separate petitions with the same number. In accordance with the provisions of section 22, chapter 166 of the general laws. A public hearing will be held on Thursday, June 4th, 2020 at 7.15 p.m. on the petition of National Grid Verizon New England to erect poles and wires upon, along, under, or across one or more public ways. Um, the hearing will be held via, via remote participation. Please see the agenda for the June 4th, 2020 city council meeting for instructions for accessing the hearing. And now we are moving on to the public hearing that we have tonight, which is public hearing on 20.047 National Grid Verizon New England poll petition for Fox Farms Road, petition number 29597581. Uh, in accordance um, with the provisions of section 22, chapter 166 of the general laws, we're holding this hearing today. And I'm gonna note that it has been posted to meet the legal requirement. Um, and I heard, I think, Councillor Dwight. I move to open the public hearing, please. Second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded to open the public hearing. Um, first, I'm gonna ask for the proponents and I see Lisa is- We have I'm to here. vote on opening the hearing. I'm sorry. Um, all those in favor, oh, no, roll call on opening public hearing. Yeah. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor mm -hmm. Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, public, it's now open and I'm gonna ask for proponents. And Lisa is here joining us from National Grid. Yes, Lisa Jasinski with National Grid. We are looking for permission to place a pole on Fox Farms Road, approximately 215 feet south of the center line of the intersection of Bridge Road and Fox Farms. There's a first span between the, you know, the first two poles that's where the wires are very low. There's, it's twofold. Uh, there's a house across the street. I think it's actually number eight Fox Farms Road and their service right now crosses the roof of their house. We'd like to bring it, you know, in, we'd like to get it off of the, uh, the roof of the house. And um, we'd also like to correct those low wires. I'm sure the DPW has been out there and taken a look at that, but they're hanging pretty low between those first two spans. Uh, the, the, house, uh, the house that it kind of sits to the left-hand side, property side of, um, I did place a call. I don't, I have not heard back from that customer, um, but it's the second house in on the right hand side and it's the far end of their property near the property line. I mean, in town take, but. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, any other proponents who'd like to speak to this petition? Okay. Hearing and seeing none. Are there any opponents? Okay. 
I also hear and uh, move to close the public hearing. Second. Second. <laughs> Motion's been made or sec and seconded to close the public hearing. Uh, roll call for closing, please. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, the public hearing has been closed. We will have our deliberation when we take this up on the agenda. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much you. for joining us, Lisa. Good to see you. I'll check in with an e by email with Laura tomorrow, if that's fine. Sounds Terrific. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, okay, are there any um, committee chair updates? Councillor Labarge. Yes, um, I would just um, like to bring forth a reminder the June meeting of City Service Committee will be held during the June 4th, 2020 City Council meeting. This will be in an abbreviated meeting to make a recommendation on the appointment of Jonathan Flagg as Building Commission. There will be no meeting on, on June 1st either. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other um committee chair announcements and if none uh, moving into one minute announcements from counselors oh uh, councillor quinlan Am I unmuted? Uh, thank you very much uh, i have uh just a quick shout out to three people and organizations that i admire Heidi Norton Smith in the Northampton Survival Center, serving our population in need. Elisa Klein and Grow Food Northampton as well, our former city councilor. And specifically, their cooperation on the community food distribution project during the time of COVID-19. The third person is, of course, our former mayor, Claire Higgins, and Community Action for connecting the dots between the two and making this a, a reality. Um, so I just wanted to tell those three people I admire them and I'm grateful for their work. But for the public. Grow Food is seeking volunteers Tuesdays and Thursdays specifically to help pack food packages and deliver to people in need. Uh, it's not a huge time commitment. Uh, Tuesdays from 9.30ish until about 12.30 and Thursdays from 9.30 until just about 11. So if you have time and compassion to do something for your neighbors in need, that would be a great use of your energy. Uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Thank you for that. Councillor Mary. Yes, I just wanted to uh, invite everyone to join me Saturday morning between eight and nine uh, for the annual Leeds Litter Day pickup uh, sponsored by the Leeds Civic Association. We'll be meeting at the Leeds uh, post office and we'll, we'll be handing out bags um, and practicing social distancing. Uh, I would bring a mask, uh, because we'll be interacting with just handing out trash bags and then people can, can, can kind of choose a road and go to their own section if they would like to. So uh, bring garden gloves or work gloves, a, a face covering and the trash bags will be um, provided and the, the trash bags will be picked up um, by someone in a, in a car. So I hope to see you there and, and get our neighbor, neighborhood looking spiffy. Um, and uh, another Ward 7 announcement is that uh, sadly the Memorial Day um, service that we usually have here in Leeds on Sunday will not will not be happening. It's canceled. We will be putting a wreath down uh, and anyone's welcome to come on their own time if they'd like to put something there or uh, leave, leave a wreath or um, some sort of message. So thank you and have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. Any other announcements from council? Okay, seeing none, um, we're gonna move on to uh, 
did I, was that somebody? Nope. Uh, we're going to move on to um, communications from the mayor. So this is the day that Mayor Narkowitz delivers the budget message um, and hands over the budget to the council. And we begin our part in this process. Um, as you know, I just announced before, our public hearing dates have been set for June 3rd at 5 and um, <clears throat> the next day, June 4th at 7 p.m. Um, and we really, you know, we welcome the public to join us and share their thoughts on the budget. And um, at that time, we'll also hear from department heads of the five largest city departments about their departmental budgets. <clears throat> um, the hearing will be continued to the next evening at the council meeting, um, where the public is again invited to come and share their thoughts before we close the public hearing and prepare for our deliberation and first vote on the budget. Uh, we'll take our second vote on the city's budget on June 18th, and the last day of the fiscal year is Tuesday, June 30th. Um, as the item on the agenda tonight is the presentation of the FY 2021 budget message, we're not deliberating on the budget tonight. Um, so we're going to hear the message from the mayor, and um, if there's some general questions that just pertain to the budget message, he may entertain them, but we're not deliberating or asking specific budget questions this evening. So, uh, Mayor Narkowitz. Take it away when you're ready. You're muted. I think I'll unmute myself. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Council President Shear, and good evening to the members of the City Council. Um, <laughs> the City Charter uh, specifies that the budget that is submitted by the um, Mayor to the City Council uh, 45 days prior to the start of the fiscal year um, include a message, and our um, tradition in Northampton has been for the Mayor to formally deliver that message at a city council meeting. So I'll uh, continue that uh, tradition, although this will be the first Zoom uh, budget message delivery. We have so many firsts uh, we're experiencing. Um, so to the honorable members of the city council, um, I submit for your consideration and approval my proposed $116,988,993 fiscal year 2021 budget for the city of Northampton in accordance with Article 7, Section 7-3 of our Charter. The budget is comprised of a $101,074,681 general fund budget, together with four enterprise fund budgets for water, $6,945,000, sewer, $6,177,500, solid waste, $795,326, and stormwater and flood control, $1,996,486. This budget proposal represents a 0.03% decrease from the current fiscal year 2020 City of Northampton budget expiring on June 30th, 2020. This is not the budget I had envisioned drafting on the evening of Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020, after Northampton voters overwhelmingly approved a $2.5 million Proposition two and a half general override, renewing our multi-year fiscal stability plan. <clears throat> Just one week later, on Tuesday, March 10th, 2020, Governor Charlie Baker declared a state of emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Our schools and non-essential government buildings were soon closed, the closure of non-essential businesses would soon follow, and our city and state economies were put into what some have described as a, quote, medically induced coma, unquote, in an effort to stem the spread of the deadly coronavirus. With the exception of those businesses and industries deemed essential by the governor, most of the small locally owned retailers in our downtown districts have been closed for weeks. Many Northampton residents have been furloughed or laid off from jobs and unemployment nationwide has reached levels not seen since the Great Depression. The pandemic has plunged our economy into a recession that may take years to recover from. Municipal government has not been spared from the economic impacts of COVID-19. The city of Northampton's major sources of local revenue like parking, building permits, taxes on hotel motel meals and adult use cannabis have dropped significantly. We are projecting a shortfall of up to 1.85 million in the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2020 and potentially over $2 million in the first quarter of fiscal year 2021 alone. The city is also experiencing significant unbudgeted expenses as our public health, public safety, and other city departments respond and adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic, both now and for the foreseeable future. 
The severe economic stress facing Northampton residents and businesses led me to delay implementation of the voter authorized Proposition two and a half property tax increase scheduled to go into effect in six weeks and forego utilizing any of the $2.5 million in additional tax levy capacity until fiscal year 2022, beginning July 1st, 2021. While I feel strongly that we cannot in good conscience implement the tax increase during a combined public health and economic crisis, this decision will put additional stress on an already dire revenue picture. As I submit this message, we have no updated information on the still pending fiscal year 2021 Massachusetts state budget, which in fiscal year 2020 provided 16.63% of the revenue used to fund the city's budget. In a normal year, both the governor and house would have completed their respective versions of the budget by now, and the Senate would have begun working on its version. With no clear timetable for if and when a state budget will be enacted, we are building our city budget with very conservative state aid estimates, knowing that we may need to revisit them later in the fiscal year. It is in this context of extreme economic disruption and financial uncertainty that I am proposing a city budget representing an overall decrease from the current fiscal year and only a slight increase to the general fund of less than one half of 1%. Given the high likelihood that additional budget cuts may be needed in fiscal year 2021 and future budget years, it is only fiscally prudent and responsible to trim our sales now rather than deferring what would only be deeper and more severe cuts moving forward. This has required difficult fiscal and personnel decisions. My proposed budget for fiscal year 2021 eliminates 17.25 full-time equivalent positions across a number of city departments, including building, human resources, information technology services, public works, parking enforcement, senior services, and treasurer collector. I must lead by example as mayor, so my own office will shoulder some of these difficult reductions through the elimination of one staff position. Some of these staff reductions have already occurred through layoffs in the current fiscal year to address our fiscal year 2020 revenue shortfalls. Other reductions involve the elimination of positions left vacant by promotions, transfers, or retirement, and together with any needed reallocation of duties will net us a projected $613,952 in expenditure reductions to balance our budget. We have shielded the health department and our frontline public safety departments of police, fire rescue, and emergency dispatch from any staffing reductions, as they are critical to the city's ongoing response to the COVID-19 public health emergency. We have also worked to hold our public schools harmless from any program or personnel cuts. The education and social and emotional well-being of our city's children have been severely impacted by the COVID-19 shutdown and we know this will require its own recovery process. While not providing the same level of appropriation increases we had projected in conjunction with passage of an override, both of our public school districts will receive substantial appropriation increases to support their critical educational missions. The two largest expenditure increases in this proposed fiscal year 2021 budget will go to the Northampton Public Schools, $1,118,095, and Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School, $646,747. The next two largest expenditure increases are among the city's many fixed costs that by definition cannot be deferred or significantly reduced despite our financial circumstances. Employee health insurance and the city's required contribution to the Northampton retirement system will rise $443,632, or 3.98%, and $258,205, 4.1%, respectively, in fiscal year 2021. While we are delaying implementation of the March 2020 override and suspending renewal of the multi-year fiscal stability plan until fiscal year 2022, we will utilize $935,020 from the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund to balance this budget. This will leave a balance of just over $2 million in that fund, which was created with the 2013 override. 
Combined with our three other stabilization funds, we will enter the new fiscal year with over $13 million in total reserves to help us weather the economic and budgetary uncertainty that surely lies ahead. During the many override town halls I held around the city in the months prior to the COVID-19 emergency, I spent con considerable time explaining, and sometimes defending, my determined commitment to rebuilding Northampton's reserve funds that had been severely depleted following the 2008-2009 Great Recession. I am thankful to the City Council for supporting a steady and disciplined approach to replenishing reserves over the last eight years. Our city's strong reserve position will play a critical role in our ability to successfully navigate the uncharted economic and budgetary waters ahead. This proposed fiscal year 2021 budget is the ninth budget I have submitted to City Council since being elected mayor of Northampton. It has easily been the most challenging to compose both logistically during a state of emergency with city offices closed and all work done remotely and because of the difficult fiscal decisions that could not be responsibly avoided or delayed, given the very real potential for sustained revenue loss and additional cuts moving forward. I am extremely proud of our city's response to the COVID-19 emergency. City employees have rapidly adapted to maintaining core governmental functions remotely while delivering services and vital information. School administrators, teachers, and support staff have worked to continue educating, feeding, and supporting the well being of our school children. Public safety departments have worked to keep our community safe and been on the front lines of responding to COVID 19 medical emergencies. Our public health team has led a city and regional response to the pandemic, working to track and contain the virus and issuing critical health guidance and orders to prevent its spread and protect our most vulnerable. Despite the significant fiscal challenges we face in the days and months ahead, your municipal government has and will continue to focus on serving and protecting its residents during this unprecedented public health crisis. I want to thank our finance director, Susan Wright, for her incredible work on this budget under challenging circumstances. Between the override and our current crisis, she has had to develop not one but multiple budgets over the last several months and has done so with her usual calm and clear-headed wisdom. Thank you to our city department heads and school superintendents for working with us to make difficult choices to develop this fiscally constrained budget. Thank you as well to the other members of my staff, Alan Wolf, Annie Lesko, and Court Klein for their assistance compiling and finalizing this document with professionalism and remote teamwork. I look forward to working with the City Council over the next several weeks to answer any questions about this budget or provide additional information it may need. Respectfully submitted, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor. Thank you so much, Mayor Narkowitz. I, um, I know that as sobering as it is for us to hear that message, it was so much harder for you and your team to write it and extreme thanks to you and, and Susan and everyone. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm just awed that you've been able to pull it together um, and pull this budget together on time despite not having the information from the state um, while working remotely and under these conditions. So thank you so much for that and for delivering that message. Um, are there any general questions or comments for the mayor on this budget message? Again, not deliberating on the budget. Councillor Labarge. Yes, um, I just want to thank the mayor and also Susan Wright. This has been very, very difficult for everybody. All the businesses in Northampton, families living in this city, people who have lost their jobs, and you've done an excellent job with this budget work. And I want to thank you again, Mayor. Thank you, Susan and Court and Alan and all the department heads working tirelessly to have to do what we have to do in order to go ahead and move on in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Count Councilor Maiori, is that a, is that a hand? <laughs> yes, fatigue, fatigue rate. Um, yes, thank you, Mayor. I'm, I'm really impressed that how fast you turned this around and in terms of having to switch gears. 
and I'm grateful to be in Northampton and have uh, your leadership. Um, I've been telling people, you know, this is the rainy day. We've been talking about the rainy day fund. Despite the beautiful weather, the rainy day is here. I was just curious, has this, um, and you, to your knowledge, have we ever, has North Hampton ever had to have a budget where there was no annual increase in spending? Did that ever happen before? Was my question. You're muted, sir. Sorry about that. Well, certainly um, my, um, my first budget and my second budget definitely was a cut because that was again right prior to the um, right prior to the uh, 2013 override. So the original budget submissions, I believe, in 2014, uh, was clearly a reduced budget. Obviously, it was then overturned by an override after the fact. Um, and um, and certainly, I was a counselor during the period of the aforementioned Great Recession when. Um, during the middle of the fiscal year, um, our state aid was cut uh, dramatically, like to the tune of $2 million in the middle of the uh, fiscal year. Um, and Mayor Higgins had to make some significant, bring forward some significant uh, cuts. Um, we were facing, a, I think, believe it was about a $6 million deficit at that point. Um, and so we had to make some significant uh, cuts. So again, um, uh, these, these um, economic, uh, crises tend to be cyclical, um, and um, and so yeah, this is uh, not unprecedented. But definitely, it tends to be tied to periods of of economic downturn uh, where there's a sudden loss of revenue or some other uh, severe event that's happening. Uh, any other counselors? Okay. Seeing none, thank you again, Mayor Northwoods, for presenting the budget to us this evening. Um, moving on, the next thing on our agenda is the consent agenda. Uh, on the consent agenda are the minutes of May 7th, 2020, and to approve the poll petition that we had the hearing on, um, that is, uh, hold on. A uh, 20.047 National Grid Verizon New England poll petition for Fox Farms Road, petition number 29597581. Um, are there any removals from the consent agenda for discussion? Okay, hearing none. Um, is there a motion? There's a motion on the floor. Councilor LaBarge made a motion. Where was the second? Councilor Quinlan. Councilor Quinlan, thank you. Okay, motions have been made and seconded. There's no discussion on the consent agenda. So a uh, roll call, please, Laura, when you're ready. <laughs> Councilor Jarrett. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Miori. Yes. Councilor yes. Nash. Yes. Councilor Quinlan. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Thorpe. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. And Councilor Foster. Yes. Okay. We we have approved the consent agenda. We are now going to recess for the finance committee. And Laura, when you are ready, um, could you take the role of finance, please? Sure, Councilor Shara. Here. Councilor LaBarge. Here. Councilor Mayori. Am I missing? Here. Councilor Thorpe. Here. Okay. Um, first item is approval of minutes from May 7th, 2020. Move to approve. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just missed Councillor Quinlan and substituted Councillor Mayori. Yeah. I, I thought maybe I got promoted or something, so yeah. I didn't say anything. I apologize. Anything. I tried to sneak in under the radar again. Um, I'm doing two things at once, but um, so Councillor Quinlan is also present. I'm here, yeah. All right. Apologies. Um, okay, so the motion's been made. For, this is approval of the minutes. 
from May 7th. It, the motion's been made by Councillor LaBarge and seconded by, not okay. Councillor Mayori. Councillor Quinlan? Uh, Councillor Thorpe already did, I think. Councillor Thorpe, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, is there any discussion on the May 7th minutes? Hearing none, Laura, when you're ready, a roll call, please. Councillor LaBarge? Yes. Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. And Councillor Thorpe? Yes. Okay. Uh, the only item on the rest of our agenda is financial order 20.052, an order authorizing acquisition of easements for drainage improvements on Rocky Hill Road 56. Um, so we, once this leaves finance and goes back to the city council, there's been a request for two meetings because there's a FEMA deadline on this for this funding. Um, and I'm going to read the order. So in City Council, May 21st, 2020, upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narquitz and Office of Planning and Sustainability, an order authorizing acquisition of easements for drainage improvements on Rocky Hill Road, Route 66. Whereas Rocky Hill Road, Route 66, east of the intersection of Ice Pond Drive, needs significant drainage improvements and whereas the locust significantly threatens the highway to qualify for FEMA hazard mitigation grant, whereas the city has been shortlisted for the FEMA grant to fund such drainage improvements and whereas in order to be eligible for such grant and in order to perform such drainage improvements, the city must acquire an easement over certain property on the north side of Rocky Hill Road shown as lot 29, non-building lot for culvert maintenance mm -hmm. on a plan of land entitled, uh, quote, a definitive subdivision plan prepared for the Community Builders Inc. and quote dated December 16th, 2002, revised May 19th, 2003, and May 21st, 2003, and recorded in the Hampshire Registry of Deeds in Plan Book 196, page 70. And whereas lot 29 is owned in fractional shares by 20 of the lot owners in the Ice Pond subdivision, and by the original developer, TCB Hospital Hill LLC. And whereas by securing the FEMA grant and performing drain, drainage improvements, the city is undertaking improvements that will significantly limit the land, the landowner's liability for potential damage to the highway. Now, therefore be it ordered, the city council hereby authorizes the acquisition by purchase, gift, eminent domain or otherwise, of easements over that parcel of land shown as lot 29, non-building lot for culvert maintenance on a plan of land entitled Definitive Subdivision Plan Prepared for the Community Builders, Inc., dated December 16th, 2002, revised May 19th, 2003, and May 21st, 2003, and recorded in the Hampshire Registry of Deeds in Plan Book 196, page 70, for the purpose of drainage improvements on Rocky Hill Road, Route 66. No appropriation is needed for this acquisition. Nothing herein shall be deemed to otherwise relieve the fee holders of Lot 29 or other responsible parties from their obligation to maintain and repair drainage structures thereon so as to protect the integrity of the highway. Okay, so that is the order. Is Move to there one. motion's been made by Councillor Quinlan and seconded. seconded, I think by Councillor Thorpe. And um, is there discussion? Oh, hi, Wayne, good to see you. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to speak to this? Sure, briefly, um, and uh, obviously questions. So um, when the Ice Pond subdivision was developed, they took they, it was a very clever solution. Rather than building a new detention pond, which happens for most projects, they took advantage of very old ice pond. And so whenever it rains, the water goes to the ice ponds and goes through an outlet structure underneath Route 66. Um, we've been seeing an increase, this is partially about climate change, we've been in seeing an increased frequency in storms, and some of those storms, whether it's climate change or not, are threatening Route 66. So um, the design of the pond creates a lot of maintenance challenges for the Homeowners Association, um, and so this solution would reduce, it would, they would still be in charge of maintenance, but it would reduce their costs somewhat, um, and more significantly from the city's standpoint, it would reduce a major threat to Route 66. In your package, I showed you a picture, I included a picture of um, the last time we had a major hurricane that did a lot of damage to 66. Um, that didn't totally wipe out the road, but it, it undermined the road and certainly threatened us. You can imagine a, a slightly bigger storm wiping it out. Um, so 
we have a program called Northampton Designs with Nature. We had a $400,000 state grant two years ago, and we were basically looking all over the city to say, what are the opportunities to build natural systems, take advantage of natural systems to reduce our cost of both flooding and undersized drainage pipes, right? So there's times we need pipes, there's times we need levees, um, and those are irreplaceable. But there's some times where we could take advantage of things like an ice pond and for less money catch the water before it ever enters the pipe. So we had this $400,000 grant, it paid for the design, for the solution for ice pond and the permitting for ice pond. We worked with a homeowner association and they were very excited about it. Um, and then as part of this process, we applied for this FEMA grant. Um, we initially thought we would have lots of time that we would get the FEMA grant and then we'd come back to city council for the, for the right of way. FEMA wrote us just about a month ago and said, you're shortlisted, no guarantee, but you know, this is a good sign, but you need to give us a easement by June 2nd, otherwise we're gonna pass on you and go to the next group. So that, that's why we're asking for two readings tonight. And I apologize that we didn't anticipate that ahead of time. And then it was further delayed. Part of the reason you didn't get this two weeks ago was if you look at the order, how complicated it is, there were some things that didn't quite make sense that when the, the developer was transferring land to the, to the homeowners, they remembered to transfer 20, 29th, 20, 29th interest in the pond, but they forgot about it for some of the deeds. So they kept some. So there's just a lot of players. And so TCB Hospital Hill, for example, doesn't even exist anymore. It's a wholly owned subsidiary of TCB, which still exists, so it's not a problem. But the reason we want to do is a taking instead of a friendly deed is just, it's too complicated. We, we couldn't claim title. We've reached everyone, TCB has no objections. Uh, the Homeowner Association is very excited about it. None of the homeowners, we didn't talk to all 20 homeowners, but none of the homeowners, the association reached out to them and none of them objected to this. Okay, thank you. Um, I can just say that uh, Ice Pond's in Ward 4, and so I was the Ward 4 counselor for six years, and I actually, had multiple meetings with them um, about this issue. And this has been a concern that they've had for years and they've been trying to find a solution. So um, I, I can imagine that they are very, very pleased about this. Um, okay, I saw, I saw hands. You did, Counselor. And I, I put mine down because Mr. Fighton answered my uh, question regarding uh, the, the uh, fractional shareholders and making sure they were notified. So I'm all set. Okay, um, I see Councillor Quinlan and then Councillor Jarrett. I just just wanted to make sure that I completely understand. This is uh, a grant, we're getting the grant and the grant's paying for everything. There's nothing in or out of the city budget with that other than passing the money through to, to create this project. There, no, there is a local match. Um, we're not committed to it. So that becomes, that goes to the normal capital improvements process. So the estimated cost of the project is $350,000. The grant is $262,000. Um, so there's a match of 87,000 and at least 17,000 of that is staff time just to oversee it. So we get credit for that. And we believe it's our understanding that we should be able to get credit for the money we already spent from a state grant for design. So we still don't know the exact, out it, there will be an out-of-pocket cost that would come before you and, and you're not committed to that at the time. Right, thank you. Okay, Councillor Jarrett. Um, so uh, I noticed that the, the city council order, the legal description, the title holders and lien holders are blank in our packet. Um, and so I talked with Laura about this, who talked with attorney Seawald, um, who, uh, <clears throat> said he understood my concerns, um, but basically that they are uh, still working on it and that the lawyer, um, the title attorney uh, will be done with it by Tuesday. So um, that it, I, it, it's a little concerning to sign something where there's no listing of who you're taking from, but um, I think I, I can trust that, uh, that people will <clears throat> do this well. Um, so, but I just wanted to point that out. And, and Councilor, if I could add one thing, if that's okay. Yep. Um, the legal description, that's sort of because in the interest of sort of belts and suspenders, we write down a legal description, but in your package, you have a survey of this land. So basically all the legal description will be taking the survey and converting it to, you know, writing down the meets and bounds, you know, so many feet along this line, but you, you see the survey in your package of exactly what it is. Um, we did send our attorneys the 
owners, all the, the property owners based on the assessor's records, that's easy. So we can send that to you. The problem is he needs to chase their title because the assessors don't need the same level of legal scrutiny that we need for to actually go into the, the document. Great. Yeah, thank you for that explanation. Any other, oh, Councillor Nash. You're muted. Yeah, so. <laughs> Just means we can't hear you. <laughs> so um, follow up on Councillor Jarrett's question. So will the parties be identified by the time we're signing this document? I, um, or, or is that still, a, in fact, I had that whole question of how we're gonna sign this thing, but I was gonna save that for when we're in full council. But um, so are the names gonna be on there in terms of who we're taking from when we're actually signing the document? So I guess, the Answer. So the short answer is, we hope you're willing to sign without them, but we could do that if we need to. So, so Laura Crutcher has kindly agreed to go around and get all your signatures. We don't need to get to a majority of council, so she doesn't have to go too far. Um, we're going to have those names by Tuesday. We have to record within a week, and of course, because of there's no physical recording, it takes time. So if you insist on waiting for names, we will certainly honor that. But if it's possible to get signatures before then, it just buys us a few days and lets us go faster. Certainly before we record it, we're happy to scan it and send you all copies so you see the full document that's going on in your, in your names. That would be cool. That would, that would be fair. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments on this order? Okay, seeing none. Um, roll call on a positive recommendation, please, Laura. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Labarge. Councillor Labarge has had to step away. Um, so that uh, moves forward with the positive recommendation. Um, uh, there's no other business, so is there a motion to adjourn finance? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Roll call, please, on adjourning when you can. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Absent. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. We've adjourned finance and we are moving back into the council meeting. And our first item back is that financial order. So 20.052, an order authorizing acquisitions of easements for drainage improvements on Rocky Hill Road, Route 66. Uh, again, this is first reading, but there has been a request for two readings on this. Move approval. Second. So, motion's been made by Councillor Dwight, seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Any further discussion on this order? Hearing none, roll call please, Laura. Okay, Councillor Mayori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Labarge, who I'm assuming has not returned. She is not. Um, so that passes in first reading. Move a suspension of rules, please, to allow for a second reading. Second. second. Motion's been made by Councillor Joyce, seconded by Councillor Nash to suspend rules. Any discussion on the suspension of rules? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. I'm sorry, Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. Move second reading, please. Second. Motion's been made by Councillor Dwight for second reading and 
seconded by Councillor Mayori, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any discussion on the second reading? Okay, hearing none, roll call please. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And um, Councillor Maori. Yes. And Councillor Nash. Yes. Um, okay, that passes in second reading. Mm. Thank you. Um, and we already, we've talked briefly about the process um, for getting those signatures. Uh, I guess you'll, you'll hear from Laura if she's gonna come and try and get your signature on that. Yes, my intention is to hopefully contact um, people tomorrow to get signatures. Okay. Um, a, question, a question about that. We can't do this electronically as PDFs. The, they have to be action. The registry doesn't accept the electronic signatures since it's wow. a document yeah, for recording. Uh, okay. is it, a question about that is, is it possible for us to, to scan, uh, print it, sign it and scan it back to you? I just know that. I don't believe so. I think we, we, Wayne and I asked this question of um, the city solicitor and they need original signatures. Okay. All right. And we need five, right, Laura? Yes. Okay. We, we will get this. We can do this. I believe in us. Okay. Um, moving on to financial orders and second reading, we've got 20.049. And order for uh, FY 2020 budget transfers. Move approval, please. Motion's been made. Second. Seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Any discussion on second reading on the budget transfers? Seeing none, Laura, roll call, please. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay, that passes in second reading. Uh, next, we have ordinances in second reading 20.037, an ordinance relative to essential services and municipal facilities. Move approval, please. Motion's been made by Councillor Dwight. Seconded. Seconded by Councillor Thorpe. Is there any discussion on the second reading? Okay, seeing none, roll call, please. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. And Councillor Shara. Yes. That passes in second reading. I don't have any other business. Uh, so uh, we'll move to adjourn. Motion's been made to adjourn. Okay. Been seconded. And uh, roll call on adjourning, please, Laura. I don't like Cal Councilor Nash's voice for the second, was it? I think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Dwight. Out of my mouth, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see everyone's face at the same time. But I don't know who he is. Right. I see I don't know face. who's all speaking at the same time, so. I see some ears. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor right. Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay, we are adjourned and it is still light out. Oh. <laughs>